Whew. It is pouring outside. I decided I wanted to work on making my own Victorian inspired lampshade and making it from scratch to use as a lampshade cover for the lamp, the floor lamp that sits right beside our bed. The floor lamp I actually purchased from Kmart a couple of years ago and inside it is one of those smart LED color changing light bulbs which is super cool but I wanted to give it a little bit more of a unique feel and also do something to lessen the brightness and the light that emanates from it because I may or may not be a full-fledged adult, but I actually sleep with a light on every single night because... Well, I guess I'll be turning off the light now. Sure is dark. Oh, it's just a chair! Ah! My fear of the dark has nothing to do with my film choices before bed. Just so you know. You know what? Stop judging me. Go back to your lampshade video. I first attempted trying to make my own lampshade from scratch and that's still something that I want to do, but I wasn't able to do it. The videos that I've seen online, you need a welding like tool to do that. I don't have that. I also don't know how to use that. I tried a few different techniques and none of them work. What I actually ended up doing was just purchasing a lampshade frame from a store called Arby's. They had lots of bell-shaped frames, but they didn't have any of the more unique Victorian style replications. So I am still on the hunt for as many Victorian style replications as I can find. I've been scouring the vintage section on eBay, trying to find some. I would love to have millions of these little lamps all throughout my house because I think they're really pretty. There are lots of different ways that you can create patterns for your lampshade, but I just decided to pin it to the lampshade and see what happened. Once I knew roughly how much fabric I needed, I dyed it using these packet dyes from RIT. And basically I just dip dyed them. First you have to soak all of the fabric and make sure it's fully wet. And then you pretty much just dip dye it. had some tassel and trim to finish the lampshade and I wanted to dye those and I did attempt to dye them in ombre but it didn't really work out. I'm not fully sure what happened. The pink went kind of a dark red and then I tried to do blue and the blue went green and then I thought maybe I'll just try and work with a bit of a rainbow effect and just make all of the tassel trim green and that worked out pretty well. The first step to sewing fabric onto a lampshade is you have to wrap the lamp. So I wrapped mine in scraps of the chiffon. The next step was to layer up the ombre fabric and honestly this took me so much longer than it should have because I don't know I'm, I'm lazy. Next I needed to cover up the seams using trim. Again super simple, hand sewed it all on. Um, I chose to dye the yellow trim purple. And then I found these beaded tassels at my local thrift store, which was absolutely fantastic. It 
I mostly chose to work in opposite complementary colors. I really like opposite complementary. I think it looks really pretty. Um, I like little splashes of boldness around. So I sewed all of this on, but my lamp didn't actually look that uh, impressive <laughs> by the end of it. And I tried doing a few things like pleating and embroidering. I tried embroidering a little bat on it. I tried pleating some chiffon. None of this really did what I wanted it to do. And it didn't really add any sort of oomph to the lamp. And that was really what I was going for, a little bit of oomph. So what I did was I went to Etsy and I found this beautiful sequined embroidered, machine embroidered peacock that was about $8. And I've linked it down below if you want to purchase one. And I cut that up and I actually sewed that to the lamp. This did mean that I had to undo a few things and re-sew parts together. But finally it was finished and it looked really pretty and a little bit creepy and gothic, which is what I like. Mm -hmm. 